Everybody, happy Friday. This is Jackie Bertoni, Jackie's Group, brought to you by Intertalk Radio Network. Today is the second interview of a great musical consortium we're putting together at the Back Bay um, Bistro in Newport Beach on October the 14th. It's going to be a beautiful, beautiful evening of Feast and Fusion. And it's, uh, it's going to be starring a group called CAB, C A B, <clears throat> as I clear my throat, uh, which is a, uh, a grouping of the Yo Cats, the who's who of musicians in the industry. Started out with Bunny Burnell and Virgil Donati, which I just interviewed on Wednesday. Um, Julian Coriel, Kayleen uh, Peoples, and the gentleman I have on the line today. I'm a big fan, man. I've been a big fan of this gentleman for years. Uh, we don't know each other personally, but that's okay because, uh, you know, the listeners out there worldwide, you know, my my uh, interviews with the Yo Cats are usually about two hours. And uh, and it goes by. And even at the end of those com- interviews, we feel that we've got two more hours to talk about it. And again, two in this situation, we're going to be down to one hour. And how in the hell are you going to put Mitch's uh, uh, history in uh, 40 years plus? But we're going to do our best. So with that said, guys, I want everybody to welcome with open ears and open ear, uh, arms to Jackie's Groove, Mr. Mitch Foreman. Mitch, welcome to the show, my brother. Hey, Jackie. Thank you so much. So I'm just going to speak really quickly to get the, get the most in in the one hour. Absolutely. We'll make it really quick. So let's just, let's just start off at the top of the hour, man, by saying... You're a Brooklynite, man, born in uh, New York, and I'm going to let you take it from there. Yes. Uh, talk about how your life started and when you made your pilgrimage here out to the West Coast. Okay. Uh, well, I was born in New York, kind of grew up out in Long Island, went to school in New York City, Manhattan School of Music, uh, which mm-hmm. was, when I was there, what a great breeding ground. I remember the first person I met at Manhattan School of Music was the great Kenny Kirkland in the hallways. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if Absolutely. your listeners are familiar with him, but great, great pianist, keyboard player. Um, mm-hmm. And I did, I, I lived in New York for a long while from until about 92 and uh, had a long and fairly successful career doing uh, jingles mostly, but right. it was like jingles with, with amazing musicians every day. And I was sort of got, I was really, got to be the youngest guy in the little group. And it was, you know, every day with Steve Gadd and Marcus and Will Lee and Don Grolnick and Michael Brecker and Patty Austin singing, Michael Bolton singing. It was, it was kind yeah. of an amazing time to just be surrounded by that much talent every day. You know, and would you say that was your, uh, your jump off point, if you will? Um, once you garnered that information, once you garnered that uh, vibe behind you with that school, was that an easy transition to take that diploma, if you will, or that moniker and take it to L.A.? Did that, did that background open doors for you in L.A., or was it a struggle when you got here? No, you know what? I, 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 along with that, I also played, I, I started playing with some like really heavy-hitting jazz guys. My first gig was with... Um, my first jazz gig was with Jerry Mulligan and I played with Stan Getz and Wayne Shorter. And that was all right. in and out of the studio scene. I kind of would go out on the road and then leave the studio scene and then come back and do it. So, uh, yeah, I mean, the reason I kind of came out here was that studio, that whole scene dried out. It was changing as home right. studios became more popular. And I worked for one big company and all of a sudden there were 30 smaller companies doing the same thing. You know, you know um, where I where I'm really familiar with your background. I'm going to jump in here, self, so, because um, you sure. know, I know your work uh, from all the people uh, that you've been blessed to work with: John Schofield, uh, you know, Mike Stern, you know, Janice Siegel, uh, Dave Samuels. The list goes down the line. We don't have time to talk about that, 
But when we get into that situation, when you bring that moniker itself, being a jazzer, uh, being a, a prolific keyboard player like you are, did you stereotype yourself into playing only that? Or do you find yourself as a chameleon that you can be hired for anything and cop it, albeit funk, R&B, rock? Is that your main passion, well, is thought, jazz? Um, doing the Soul Studio scene in New York really it invited me to be uh, conversant in many mm-hmm. different idioms, be it, be it, you know, rock, classical, R&B, punk, um, jazz. But I, I grew up playing jazz. I mean, that was the thing. I play, and I grew up mostly playing jazz piano. That was really what I was into. And, and I, I was an early adopter of keyboards and computers and stuff. But I find now, for me, it's I, I enjoy playing piano or Rhodes or personally, more, almost more than anything else. Mitch, are you a, a product of a musical family at all? On uh, uh, what was mom and dad nope. listening to when you were growing up? Not at all. Okay, I'm right there. Not with at all. The they were like, "What? Why? They were, why are you listening to Miles Davis live, evil, incredibly loud in your room all day long?" <laughs> well, look at you now, brother. You know, because I've been blessed, man. I mean, two friends that I'm sure you know very well. I've had the uh, the pleasure of working with over the years. My first major Yo Cat keyboard player that I had the pleasure of working with. Um, as a percussionist, live was uh, is and still one of the, my favorite players, Mr. David Benoit, and uh, you know okay. David and I loved his loved his playing, very percussive. And then I moved over to another gentleman by the name of Mr. Freddie Ravel, and Freddie and I had okay. many many years together. And, and uh, you know, and so that playing itself. Are you? Um, let's talk about you getting on stage live. Let's we'll come back to the studio. But when you're playing on uh, live on stage, um, do you find yourself more at home, Mitch? as a smaller group or do you, or does it matter? Can you go with the full orchestra? What's your preference in the way of playing in the, in the, in the eyes of the audience in small venues, large venues, take it from there. Uh, you know what? I, I, I don't really, I, I, I enjoy everything just, just as long as I'm surrounded by, uh, it, it's really, I, I just try to bring whatever I have to any situation, be it a small group, a larger, but a, a gig with, you know, five people in the audience. Some of my favorite gigs have been sitting in a room and there's five people playing. And I feel like, you know what, I can have a transformative experience for myself and for them. So it doesn't really matter to me as long as the, the music's good, the people are good, it's a comfortable environment. I, I'll just bring it whatever it is. Mitch, when, you, uh, when you're traveling itself, if you're doing um, a, a live gig, um, other than your own outboard gear, we're going to talk about that self. Um, how big of a setup are you using in your rider? Are you requesting, um, obviously, um, based upon the stage size, um, an acoustic piano there itself? What is your what's your setup? Share with the audience. It depends it depends on the gig. Uh, I mean, I have a you know I have an electric keyboard rider because sometimes the the venues just don't have a piano right. as such. So just a couple keyboards, and I'm pretty adaptable. Um, as I said, lately, I prefer uh, acoustic piano or Rhodes, even though sometimes you don't know what, what Rhodes you're going to get. So you're almost better off exactly. with, a, with a keyboard. But I, you know, I try and, and have and both, a, a backup keyboard as well. Sure. And, you know, and I ask this uh, for a lot of the uh, guys that are your age, my age, because uh, we've been through the whole thing, situation on the road and so on and through the modern technology and such. But I'm still curious, especially in the way of keyboards, um, you, uh, what is your preference when you're on stage? Um, are you forced to go with the in-air monitors or are you still, I used to use the word and I love it, the slave to the ambient wedge. What is your preference? Uh, um, you know, I have in-ears and sometimes I like, I, I find if it's, if it's a one-off gig that there can be more problems than they're worth because you're so isolated <laughs> and you can't, you can't right. speak to people if there's a problem and you can't hear stuff on stage. So if it's just a one-time gig, I, I would go with a, a floor wedge. Um, if it's if it's something where it's they're really together and it's an, a great crew and they're so used to it, then then the in ears provides you know can be a great listening experience. Yeah, on both sides, but, of both but, monitors, inner inner or wedge. Let me just jump in because I want to find out there because I always want to put this on my list of questions that coming back because I'm, I'm glad to know because I still am a lover of the wedge. That's just myself. I cannot stand in ears. But the fact I want to ask right. you as a keyboardist, as a person who is the 
uh, who is the driving force of the most majority of music that you're playing jazz wise. What is it that Mitch does not want to hear in his mix? <laughs> That's a, that's a strange question. Funny question. Wrong notes is my first answer. Um, but what oh, I don't want to hear. <laughs> um, I don't know. I sort of want to, I want to hear it like it's a record, you know, I want to hear perfect, like a, a record that with the mix that my mother would like basically oh, with me louder than everyone else. <laughs> and, you know, that's, that's a fair question. And, and Mitch, do you have a preference? Kind of an unfair question. Um, are you more uh, in love with live performance or studio? Oh, I, I, either, either. I, I mean, I'm a I'm a total computer geek, and will sit and stare and tweak and move a note around, and you know, for right. years. But I, I that feeling where you re- really are connected and in the moment and in the zone, whatever you choose to call it. In a live performance, sure. to me, I, you, you can't beat that. So the, the 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 immediate recognition from the audience itself, other than hearing a, yourself or an engineer saying, "Okay, let's go to the next track," you know, so that's uh, you know, that's the the I don't know, it's the benefit of having your own studio. Myself, I'm talking to you from that right now. Um, do I miss right. the big rooms? Do I, you know, um, no, I just I was at a big room uh, last year. I was at Capitol, and uh, I loved it for the first five minutes, you know, and. Uh, thinking that it'd be kind of just cool to be back and doing this now. And I just find myself in a situation, I don't know how you are, but the labels, uh, albeit large or small, don't mind, you know, uh, um, sending everything by a WAV file. They're getting the same sound um, out of my home studio as they did in the big rooms. Um, do you find yourself yep. loving a bigger room or are you? do you have, do you employ yourself in your own home studio? I, I do most of the work out of my home studio. Uh a, a, a little bit. And there was something to be said for, I mean, I'm, I'm, I struggle to have a few more than two or three people playing at, at the same time at my place. So it's right. nice if you have, have a group and you want four or five or more people playing together to have the, the luxury and the ease of a studio that's mm-hmm. set up for that. So for that, I prefer that. And sometimes when is it, when there's more going on and especially if I'm engineering or so, then it, it can get, right. It, it's distracting from the music for me to deal with wear too many hats, you know, pro tools. Or logic, I, I did something re- uh, either I'll do pro tools. If it's, if it's something that I'm sharing with other people and if it's mm-hmm. more focused on live recording and if it's more just myself, I'll do logic. I did a session here at the house recently with a couple people, you know, four or five people. And I have a 21 year old son, Ellis, who's, currently going to Berkeley in Boston, hey, Alice. but it was just, he's a great engineer and just so comforting to just have him run the show and I could just concentrate. But unfortunately, cool you not here that. all the time. Well, you know, and you just mentioned the fact of Berkeley, you know, we're really heavily involved right now uh, through a dear friend of ours. I hope you know him also, Mr. Terry Woolman. And we actually had a meeting with the Berkeley boys out here because uh, they're joining forces with inner talk radio. And, um, uh, oh, nice. We'll let the listen. Yeah, we'll let the uh, the uh, the listening audience worldwide know more about that when we can get the gag order lifted once we sign those contracts. But it's a it's a great situation, and you know, and you know, and you, I'm sure you probably agree with me a hundred percent on this, Mitch. But the fact is, there's such that cool vibe. How many people do you know? And I'm uh, you can answer the question. I'm done asking it. Uh, that came out of Berkeley or came out of North Texas and, and so on. Do you, um, did you have a tenure at Berkeley at all? I never went to Berkeley. Um, I never went to Berkeley, but everyone I know went to Berkeley for a year, two years. Right. Rare right. that people graduate, but um, yeah. but so many, that so many is. people. Yeah. Let me let me ask you this question, my friend. After all these years, yes. and we're not going to be yes. sitting talking about age. I'm 57. I know you're right next to me. Um, yeah. What motivates Mitch right now to sit down and write? Where's your motivation coming from? Ah, that is a good question. And I, I find it sometimes a little difficult to be motivated, but you know what? It's, I'm so busy and I have so many projects and such a list of to do's and finish this and hand in this mix and hand and write this thing that, God bless. that I, I, I really want to, uh, find that, find that space and, and make car. I, I have to carve out the time to let 
the inspiration come to me and I haven't been doing it lately though. I have some pieces that I, I really want to work on that are I'm in the middle of it. So, uh, you know, what the, I forgot, forgot the question, but no, the, the question is, you know, the, uh, was the vibe itself, you know, what motivates you, what keeps you, um, you know, when you wake up in the morning, when you go to bed at night, is there a pad of paper next to you? Because there's, there's a, there's a passage in your mind, uh, or there's a, a a musical lyric that you if you don't write it down then you're gonna forget it in the morning. What makes you wake up in the morning and go, okay, I'm gonna face this day with some great great experiences. I'm gonna write my ass off. Or you find yourself waking up going, fuck, another day. I gotta go by drag myself into the studio and so on. I have a hard I'd be hard pressed to say that comes out of your mouth. You know, but I do want to know what what motivates you. I mean, is it love? Is it passion? Is it family? Is it the you know shit what? that's it's, going on in the world? It's. I, I'm sitting with that for a minute. Um, it, you know what? It's it's always it's always been and always will be. And I guess when it stops being that, I won't do it anymore. But it's always fun, and it's always an opportunity for uh, to chase that that moment that that feeling where you're there's a connection to whatever you want to call it to spirit to something beyond. Yeah beyond me. And, and, and it, when I allow it, 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 it is, that's what I, that's what I'm looking for. That's what I'm striving for. That's what keeps me going in both playing and yeah. writing and every aspect of it. And I love what you said right now. You just said the word when you allow it, you know, and we've got a minute left of this segment. I'm going to ask this and we'll pick it up on the next segment. When you say allow it, look, we've earned our stripes in this industry. We've been around the business for a long time. Um, you know, we're very thankful to be gainfully employed and we, you know, and, and bragging, if you will, I will, we make a damn good living at it when the work is there. But when we go to the work yes. is there, I'm going to find out about uh, if there is any type of a figure that Mitch will accept or not, because I'll tell you myself personally, if I'm hired for a gig and the music sucks, right? I don't want to play on it, man. I don't want to play on it. If the music's wonderful, yes. I'll do it for free. I want to know more right. about your feeling itself on bad music, you know, when you have a name uh, like Mitch Foreman, when you have an when you have an established name, it's almost like that good looking girl in high school. Nobody wants to ask you out because they figure you already have a date or you won't do the show. So I want to find out what it takes or what it's taken away when you've earned your stripes. Um, has it worked for you or worked against you? We'll talk about that with hmm. young artists coming up and so on. So with that said, guys, this is Jackie Bertoni talking to Mitch Foreman. This is Intertalk Radio Network, and the show is called Jackie's Brew. We come back on segment number two. We're not going to have enough time, man, but we're going to do the best we can. I'm proud of yeah. privilege to welcome Mr. Mitch Foreman. So, Mitch, don't go anywhere. Audience, don't go anywhere. We'll be right back after a short break. You don't want to miss a thing. Stay tuned. Are you serious about your music? Are you ready to run with the big dogs? The experts at Pitbull Audio have the gear to get you into the game. From leading manufacturers like Mesa Boogie, Fender, Pioneer, and American Audio. To sound your best, you need the best. Pitbull Audio can deliver in rehearsal, on stage, and into the big time. Dropping beats, shredding guitar, or making the crowd roar. Whatever you dream, Pitbull Audio can help make it happen. We are Pitbull Audio. We want you to play it loud. PitbullAudio.com. You know what's all around you every waking moment of your life? Marketing. You're choking on it. I'm Scott Robertson, and when it comes to strategic PR, branding, and marketing, I've seen it all. And actually, I'm still seeing it because bad marketing never sleeps. Join me each week on May the Best Brand Win right here on Intertalk Radio and learn how to make the marketing for your brand unforgettable. The Moyer Entertainment Group, in conjunction with Adario, Radio Airplay, and Looploft, is keeping music in our local schools and presenting local talent to the world through the Temecula Valley Music Awards. Submissions for entry into the TVMA 2017 season are now open in all genres, including a youth category for artists under 18 for the October 7th Star Studded Awards Show, where 100% of the proceeds go towards supporting local music education in the Temecula Valley. Details, tvmawards.org. Make this your vinyl night. I'm John J.R. Robinson, and every week, music creation comes alive through stories, experiences, and sounds when vinyl records filled our hearts and minds. My friends and I share our tips and techniques used in creation of iconic tracks for recording artists such as Michael Jackson, Eric Clapton, Quincy Jones, and Steve Winwood, to name a few. 
Vinyl has emerged hot, and the soul of vinyl defines art and passion, which burns deepest at night. Tune in every Wednesday at 2 p.m. Pacific Standard Time on entertalkradio.com. Todd Zuckerman from the rock band Sticks, and you're listening to my pal Jackie Bertoni on Jackie's Groove. Groove on, motherfuckers. <laughs> Jackie's Groove. Come journey with us through the rhythm of the music business with your host, Jackie Bertoni. This is Jackie Bertoni, Jackie's uh, Groove, Intertalk Radio Network, here into all things music, and I'm talking to the incomparable Mr. Mitch Foreman. You know, Mitch and I were talking on the break, and we normally do this with all of my buddies and sisters on the line, but you know, Michael, uh, Michael, Mitch mentioned Michael McDonald and his time that he had played with Michael, and uh, Mitch didn't know that Michael and I are, are blood brothers. We've known each other and have been recording with each other since 1990, oddly enough, and um, with mm. that said, when you mentioned the fact that you were playing with Michael, um, I was curious because I know my dear friend, you know, Pat Coyle has been Michael's keyboard player for a year. But as soon as you said the word B3, when you were playing with Michael and being a jazzer, I don't want to keep throwing that moniker on you, the jazzer, the jazzer. But when you're playing with Michael, um, you know, yeah. you are playing with probably one of the greatest keyboard players out there, not to mention the fact the man's got a voice that's synonymous with greatness. He sings with every bone in his body. But when you were playing with Mike um, on stage, were you finding yourself duly, uh, doing more comping if you will um you know more b3 uh what were you doing with him i'm curious to find out as much how was proud uh, well, you know what it was playing uh, uh, what was the last thing you said i'm sorry i didn't hear you no i said uh, as proud as you are to jazz playing what were you okay. playing with michael not being a jazzy situation at all well it, it was a long time ago a eh? and w- i had just done a little tour with someone. He heard me playing B3 with, I think it was BWB maybe, which was Rick Braun, Kirk Whalum, and right. Norman Brown. Mm-hmm. And I guess I was playing B3. And, and the truth be told, I was never really that much of a B3 player. My theory, and really? I played, I would do sessions in New York, and my theory was that the guy before me knew what he was doing, so I'd just leave the draw bars alone. <laughs> but <laughs> as time went on, I sort of figured it, a little, figured it out a little bit. So, uh, but, but, but I, so I wasn't really all that comfortable, but he heard me playing and he hired me to play B3, which was amazing. And so, uh, but I was, we were talking about in-ears and that was one of my best in-ear experiences with, with Michael McDonald because he had a crew that really knew what they were doing. And I was, I, I was sharing with you on the break that, I, that we were just, I forget the song. I wish I could remember it, but it was just Michael playing piano, me B3 and him singing. That was the whole song. And it was just the most amazing thing to just hear that so clearly and perfectly and just, you know, and, and you ask how you, how I approach that. And you don't have mm-hmm. to do much when you're, especially with him. It's, he, he, it's, it's just, you know, you're just adding a little color here and there. There's not much to do. So, you know, and, and, and I, I think so glad that I you also, no, I'm sorry, we got a little delay there. I want no, to ahead. mention one thing to you. Um, is that Mike has got a new album. Michael's got a new album out um, September the 15th called Wide Open. So if you get a chance, Mitch, definitely check it out. It's uh, his first album Absolutely. in nine years, all all new music, man, and it's it's quite enjoyable. So there you go, Michael. I know if you're listening out there, I'm kind of taking care of my brother. So uh, let's go back to let's absolutely. go back to the situation about motivation. Uh, we we got past the wedges, we got past the ears, and so on and so forth. We talked on the uh, right before we went on the last segment about the motivation. You know, I interviewed. Uh, Lee Lochnane, uh, the co-founder of Chicago last week, a dear friend of mine for years. And I asked him, I said, congratulations on 50 years, Lee. Why? And Mitch, you know what his response mm. was to me? Because yes. we still love playing. And here's a man that's a multimillionaire. I'm not going to look into his finances. The man doesn't have to work anymore, but he wants to work. He loves to work. He's 71 years old, and he walks on stage 
like he did when he they started out in 67. Um, do you mm. still get that feeling when you're walking on? Let's forget the studio for a second. When you are hired, when you're walking on, because understand, people know that what we do is very cool, but there's nothing fucking glamorous to what you and I do until the lights go on. I mean, it's that hurry up and wait. It's the spending the whole day. So take the listening audience and your fans out with you. You get up in the morning, you're doing a live gig. I don't care if it's travel time or if it's a local gig. What gets you going in the morning? What's your day start like with coffee? Share with us. Um, it's interesting. Well, hey, I'm I'm a big. Uh, my day begins with meditation, truthfully, and I'm staring yeah. at my meditation app, which is telling me that I've done. Uh, this is this is what I'm bragging about. When I'm actually going right. to look at it and tell you, 306 consecutive days. So which is pretty good, but, yeah. uh, no, I've been doing it for years. And, uh, so, you know what? I start with that and I start with, um, you know, try center myself and, and maybe read something that's, uh, inspirational mm-hmm. and, uh, you know, and then I get, get to whatever the business of the day is. Usually I have some work to do. That's, that's, uh, a record. Are you talking about if it's a show day or something? Usually lately mm-hmm. I've been exactly. at home a lot and the show days are local. So, I, I, this, this, the idea that it's a show day doesn't hit me until about two hours before the gig. And I'll start just making sure I have all the music together and all the, all the ducks in a row. And, um, you know, I, it, it, this is not a big deal of preparation. I I just kind of go there with a open mind and, Mm -hmm. and especially if it's my own gig, then I'm, you know, a little more conscious of how I can lead the band and have the best experience for everyone. You know, and that's a good part that you brought up, but I still want to know this situation because, you know, it's, 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 you know, LA is not a place to ask for gas passes. You know, they just, unfortunately on a lot of the bigger shows, the, uh, you know, it's, it, they're, they're shrinking the guest list and what's available to the performers. But with that said, when you have, other than, um, your family, other than your close net friends itself, does Mitch, regardless if it's your gig or somebody else's gig, uh, do you welcome guests before the show? Or are you strictly a kind of a person that wants to do the vibe after the show? I'm curious. Um, it depends on the venue and, and how, uh, yeah, I mean, usually if you, after is better, obviously right. before I, I, I don't want to really take the focus away from what's about to happen, mm-hmm. but okay. if it's a, a brief, a brief, hello, Hey, how you doing? That's cool. But any, you know, a more involved conversation that might be best to do after. All right. Well, let me ask you this question about situations about being older in this industry itself. Mitch, are, when it comes to the music and business, and I don't think those two words should definitely, definitely not share the same sentence, but the word uh, music business in today's, today's barometer, are you optimistic or are you pessimistic of what's going on right now? You know, I, 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 I feel totally optimistic. I, I, I don't get into the whole you know, the situation is so devastating and record sales are down and stuff. Right. I, I see it as a, there's just new opportunities and let, let me figure them out. Let me embrace them. Let me do, do something different, do something new, try and, and make money in a different way. And, uh, mm-hmm. you know, I, I don't really get involved. I don't focus on what I don't have and, and what's not available, but instead I, I, I try to look at what, what the positive is, what, where, where is it? Where is an, a financial right. stream that's available? And let, let me, let me do something this. different. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, I'm just saying, let, let me do, let me try something different. Let me write something. I do some writing for TV that, that I do. Uh, I just started, I took a teaching gig at a college that starts next week. Um, so I'm, ha- I'm happy and blessed to have a, a wide variety and array of financial right. opportunities. You know, we, when we talked on the break going out, we talked about, uh, you know, being uh, the Yo-Cats. And for the word people out there that are lame is the Yo-Cats are the guys that have earned the stripes industry. They were the first calls, if you will. Um, and that's something that we deserve. And obviously, you know, there's, uh, there's a thousand different projects out there. And, the, and there's the great Mitch Foreman. But the, the producers are going to hire the keyboard player they feel that's going to be best for that gig. And that's why, um, you know, I work with a, a grip of producers that know they can hire all of my friends, the Luis, you know, the Luis Contes, the Lenny Castro's 
and the list goes down the line, but they know they've worked with me over the years, so it's easy. With that said, um, we talked about also about bad music, you know, and yes, there's a lot of bad music out there. So when you're hired for a gig, Mitch, and we won't mention any names at all, there's no need to, but when the, when the music comes to you and, and they're, they're basically resting on the fact that you're going to bring that music to life, if that music is dead when it gets there and any amount of defibrillators aren't going to sit there and breathe back life uh-huh. into it, how do you or do you walk away from the project or do you do your best and hope it really never comes out? Hmm. Funny question. Um, so the, f- the first thing I, I, when you hear, when I hear bad music, I'm like, that, that sort of rubs, the, is there really anything bad? Is it just relative? And you know, we choose to mm-hmm. see it as bad and it's just to the person that wrote it. They, they're thinking it's great. Some people think, you know, I, I could be sitting on something that I know is great for me. Right. And someone who's doesn't listen to that style of music thinks, what well, what is that? It's just noise. You know? Absolutely. So anyway, Absolutely. Enough, not with better good, but, but something that maybe doesn't resonate with me, I, it would depend. It would depend on how, how much outside of my comfort zone it is to be part Mm -hmm. of it. Um, There is always the element of how much I need the money and what it's paying. I mean, if it's a ridiculous amount of money, I might say yes more so than, or, you know, I I mean, my favorite thing to do sometimes is just either. I just say, I, I just don't have time, which is, which is honest or no, that's honest, man. Yeah, I just say I, I I don't have to I'm, I I can't do it I, I don't I'm not available right now I'm you know and 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 part of that for me lately is l- let me use that time to focus on something that I care about for myself that's a creative something that I'm not giving enough time to right. so I, I don't want to waste that that time on something that I really am aren't feeling um, you know it, you know and, and the other thing you could do I'm, I'm, that I might do is uh, go ahead. No, no, I'm laughing right now and stuff because you're 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 like channeling my thoughts right now. Go ahead and I'll tell you what I'm thinking right now. Also, okay. I, to, I mean, the you know, other, you know, oh. if I'm if I'm sitting staring at my two kids in college tuition bill and saying, "All right, how are we going to pull this <laughs> off this month?" I might just you know make my rate so high that that it'll pay the bill and I can struggle through a day or two of it and be fine. That, I, that is not. so perfect. That, I love that. I'm I'm trying to hold back my laughter and stuff because again, there's, there's a threshold of pain that we're we're all willing to endure. But you know, you um, being the great player that you are, this is the thing I have a very very difficult time. And I, I was given this information by a mutual friend of ours. I won't mention any names, but he told me that the good way not to insult somebody but give them an ambiguous um, compliment when someone comes up to Mitch Foreman and they go. Oh man, I really enjoyed your playing. You know, I'm a keyboard player too. So maybe what you should come out when I'm playing, I want to invite you out there. Then you go out, Jackie goes out to a show and I'm looking at that band and I'm going, Oh, this is fucking miserable. And then they come up to me, especially the percussionist or the sax, whatever it may be. And they go, so what'd you think? And I look at them and I was taught years ago. Here's my three responses, Mitch. First thing I look at them, I go, wow, that's one. (laughs) The second one is, wow, you took it, you took it well beyond jazz. Ah, you know? And then the third, and then the third one is I'm at a loss for words, you know, and then I get the, and the initial kick under the table from my wife. Cause my, you know, it, it, my whole thing is if you don't want an honest answer, don't ask me, that's the East coast in me. You know, I'm not, I'm not yes. a cruel person, but if you know, don't, don't ask a, a question if you don't want an honest answer. So with that said, and bad music, which is all around, is if I walk into a nightclub and I'm takes me 15 minutes to understand the song that they were writing or covering, I, I just can't endure it. You know, I, I just won't do it. But with that said, going back into the, um, the uh, we talked about earlier about your inspirations and your family, were they musical and you said no and you were the only one, blah, blah, blah. Growing up and being in the limelight and with your, let's talk about your son for a second. Or your other, or your other baby. When they'll always be your babies, obviously, even though they're in college. But did yeah. they understand what Dad did for a living? That Daddy didn't wake up at nine o'clock in the morning, come home at five o'clock in the evening. Did they get what you did and what you do? Uh, I, I think maybe they're just starting to, you know, um, mm-hmm. and maybe starting to enjoy it and uh, appreciate it. 
uh, you know, for them, it's normal. It's normal to have, right. You know, to have a dad yeah, that yeah, all know, of it, a sudden has, has a room that's filled with more keyboards than right. should be in this room. Yeah. Cause I'm looking at your bio, man. I mean, it's everybody you work for or who the, who, who are the who's who of the jazz industry. You know, um, I had an interview, great interview, um, earlier this year with Carney Wilson, a group I've worked with over the years called Wilson Phillips, the daughters of Brian Wilson, yep. my boss, my yeah, girlfriend. Yeah. And, 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 and also too, speaking of Mike McDonald, I just had an interview we do a thing called Mitch on, and, and we're going to put the olive branch out to you. I have a thing called Emerging Mondays. It's all based upon the young people coming up and making inroads in the industry, and it's a very successful, successful series that we've been doing. And I interviewed Dylan McDonald, a kid that I used to hold in my hands, um, the mm. offspring to Michael McDonald and Amy McDonald. And here's truth be told, Dylan's listening a, a, a audience and ratings were higher than his mom and dad's. And and he goes, I can't wait to shove it down my mom and dad's throat. But the point I'm making is that growing up with as Brian Wilson's daughter, Carney, you know, I and then I interviewed uh, Kathy Rich. Her father was Buddy. And the fact I asked that right. question about you is because there'd be a knock at the door and Kathy would go to the door and she'd open it up. And lo and behold, it was uh, Uncle Frank, Frank Sinatra, you know, and who was just Uncle Frank to her. And then when Carney would right. come down the stairs at, at nine years old and dad would be behind the piano sitting next to a guy by the name of Paul McCartney. Then the week later, it was Elton John. That was Uncle Paul and Uncle Elton. Right. So with that said, right. the kids coming in, did the kids, well, it's kind of a hard question, but did they understand who the yo cats that daddy was playing with? Uh, or did they finally found that out now? And what's the response? You know, I, think, I, I think they grew up listening to such a different style of music that, that, and, and no one that I would be hanging out with would impress them at that point. Okay. I think now, okay. I think now in retrospect, when, when my daughter mentions to her friend that, Oh, my dad, you know, when she sees a picture on the wall, there's me with Stan Getz and her, you know, her friends are like, well, really? You know, they sort of know and are impressed. So now all of a sudden, maybe just, she's starting to realize that maybe there was some, uh, her dad maybe had a degree of fame. And daddy I will have always have a degree of fame. You know what's upsetting right now, friend, is we're coming out right now of the second set. You see how fast it goes, 23 seconds left. Come so on. That said, we, we come back. We're going to be going back, and this next segment is all about Mitch Foreman. How are we going to stalk him? How are we going to find him? How are we going to put some money in his pocket from his music? Ah. With that said, guys, don't go anywhere. We're going to come out of the final hour and the final segment of Jackie's Groove. My name is Jackie Bertone. The network is called the Intertalk Radio Network. You're into all things music. And when we get back, we're going to do some business on both sides. So with that said, guys, don't go anywhere. You don't want to miss a thing. One more segment with Mr. Mitch Foreman. Mitch, don't go anywhere. We'll be right back after a short message. Hi, this is Tim Dolbear, host of Sound Experience here on Intertalk Radio. And Source Connect by Source Element is the essential tool that we use to link between my studio in Austin, Texas, and the WS radio station in San Diego. Now, with Source Connect, not only can we communicate in real time and with HD audio, but it's synced up and is of a high enough quality that I can use it for real time ADR work, remote recording, and overdubbing, and it even allows me to remotely control a DAW. Source Connect by Source Element, affordable, high quality audio and video connection over the internet for all of your production needs. You know what's all around you every waking moment of your life? Marketing. You're choking on it. I'm Scott Robertson, and when it comes to strategic PR, branding, and marketing, I've seen it all. And actually, I'm still seeing it because bad marketing never sleeps. Join me each week on May the Best Brand Win right here on Intertalk Radio and learn how to make the marketing for your brand unforgettable. Make this your vinyl night. I'm John J.R. Robinson, and every week, music creation comes alive through stories, experiences, and sounds when vinyl records filled our hearts and minds. My friends and I share our tips and techniques used in creation of iconic tracks for recording artists such as Michael Jackson, Eric Clapton, Quincy Jones, and Steve Winwood, to name a few. 
Vinyl has emerged hot, and the soul of vinyl defines art and passion, which burns deepest at night. Tune in every Wednesday at 2 p.m. Pacific Standard Time on entertalkradio.com. Are you serious about your music? Are you ready to run with the big dogs? The experts at Pitbull Audio have the gear to get you into the game. From leading manufacturers like Mesa Boogie, Fender, Pioneer, and American Audio, to sound your best, you need the best. Pitbull Audio can deliver in rehearsal, on stage, and into the big time. Dropping beats, shredding guitar, or making the crowd roar. Whatever you dream, Pitbull Audio can help make it happen. We are Pitbull Audio. We want you to play it loud. PitbullAudio.com. Hi, this is Michael McDonald, and you're listening to my good buddy Jackie Bertoni on Jackie's Groove. Come journey with us through the rhythm of the music business with your host, Jackie Bertoni. Welcome back to the final hour, final segment of our, our interview. This is Jackie Bertoni, Jackie's Group, brought to you by Intertalk Radio Network and Mr. Mitch Foreman. Before we go any further, guys, do yourselves a favor when you can't listen to me live or our plethora of shows live on Intertalk. Go to uh, Google or go to iTunes and download our easy-to-use and easy-to-navigate application. Two words. Intertalk is the first. Radio is the second. Take Jackie's Groove and the rest of our shows on the go with you. We can't listen live. And also, I want to say thank you to our sponsors who keep this crazy ship and the lights on. So first and foremost, Calvin Lee and the group over at Pitbull Audio. It's pitbullaudio.com. I just want you to play it loud. Someone I'm sure Mitch is very familiar with. I know everybody I interview are. But our other sponsors called Studio Instrument Rentals. You can reach them at sir-usa.com for all of your backline needs and all of your studio instrument rental needs also. And the people I'm most biased to, Vader Percussion, who's been giving me my drumsticks for the past 24 years, Sabian Symbols, S A B I A N dot com for the past 25 years, and uh, and our dear friends of ours at Drum Workshop, dwdrums.com, John Good and Chris and John, uh, Don Lombardi. Thank you guys for your sponsorship and your love. And last but most importantly, LP Music, my drum percussion choice for the past 28 years. Thank you guys. You can reach them at lpmusic.com. Thank you for your support. Now, with that said, um, I want to ask you this question, Mitch, and welcome back. I had to throw some business in there. You know, we're talking so no much problem. about your, your career, and there's just so much to talk about, but we can't forget what we're really here for today, and that is this great, great venue called Backstreet Bistro in Newport Beach at the Newport Dunes. We're hosting, I'm hosting, this amazing event called Feast Infusion, starring Mr. Bunny Burnell. And now, just loving Mitch's playing, and I cannot wait to hear what you're going to do with Bunny. You know, and if people don't know that, if all of Bunny's uh, great accolades in music, he's a master chef also. And that's this whole thing itself. So you want to go to TicketWeb.com. You want to get tickets or go to BackstreetBistro.com or even get a hold of us. And uh, I can guarantee it's sure to be a sellout. And it's going to be just a beautiful fusion of food, fusion of music, and just a bunch of great guys hanging out, eating and getting fatter than we should be getting. So with that said, you know. Mitch, you know, we, we, it takes, it takes a village, as they say, we can, we're not standalones. And if you like to think you are, then you're a failure because it's, uh, you got to give props to where props is due. And I want to say, say thank you to my team. Uh, you've spoken to most of them already. And that my team includes Candy and, and Megan and, and Cedric, who's uh, on the board and Paul, our COO and our major engineer and a gentleman who's a big fan of yours, my friend. And he's in the studio right now and he wants to come on and say hi. And that's the CEO of our network. His name is Florentino Buenaventura. He's not a wrestler. It's a great bass player. So, Florentino, with that, say, would you please say hi to Mitch? Mitch, please say hi to Florentino. <laughs> Why you got everybody busting hey, up boy. over here? <laughs> hey, what's going on, Mitch? Everyone's, How you doing, man? Good, good, man. Everyone's laughing over here at uh, Jackie calling me a wrestler because I, I probably could have a, a, a job. I could be Kenji. Uh, who was this guy's Kenji, uh, the Japanese wrestler? I don't know. I'm going on tangent here, man. Welcome to the, okay. to the network, brother. Good to talk to you again. Thank you so much. 
Same here, man. Yeah, we had Same a here. we had a great conversation last night talking about names and how how names go. Me and Mitch did so. It's it's it's. Oh uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Mitch Mitchell, Florentino, Tino. There we go. There we go. There you go. Definitely, you're 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 definitely been jumped in now that you're here on the the network uh-huh. with us, man. So we we like to finally say that once you've been in, jumped in, you can't jump out, and um, we, we'll always be here to support you and make sure that. Uh, we, uh, we, 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 anything that you need, uh, you know, we're here for you, brother. So appreciate you being on, man. Cool. Uh, my pleasure. Thank you so much. Yeah, dude. And we're going to have a great time, uh, over there in Newport beach at this, this venue. I don't know if everybody, I, you know, a lot of people know about the resort there, the, the Newport dunes, but the back base bistro where you guys are going to be playing is gorgeous. Uh, I was just Stunning. there. Yeah. I was just there a couple of nights ago and, uh, you know, just the sunset when it, when it, when it closes, uh, over the bay, and you're, you've got that view because it's got this very wide open, uh, you know, windows. So it's just, it's amazing. Right. But uh, is it just on the, uh, like across the street from that high at Newporter? Yeah, yeah. So exactly. when, if you, when you go, yeah. Well, okay. So it's, it's right there. Uh, a lot of people use that, that, that venue to park when they're going to the right. Newport that's where, Festival. Right. That's where I park to, for gigs I do at that, at that high at Newporter. So exactly. right on that street. And they have big concerts there. They do the Fourth of July for Newport there, and a lot of stuff. But uh, right. you know what? What we found is uh, much like this network, we really want to support the talents that are just you know uh, don't always get the spotlight they deserve, and that are just amazing, uh, like yours, like Bunny's, like uh, like uh, um, all of Kayleen. Um, Julian's coming on next week, uh, you know, for an interview on Wednesday, and then of course Kayleen and Bunny are going to be. Uh, you know, the, uh, the couple of days, the following week after. So, um, you know, we, we, you know, and of course Virgil, I don't know how am I forgetting Virgil. It's going to be an amazing night. And, uh, uh, yeah. you know, and, and, and you are, are, have your own project projects here as well. And part of uh, kind of what I was alluding to is the network's all about spotlighting incredible talents. So tell us a little bit about, uh, um, you know, your, your URLs, your websites, your, your social medias, as well as, uh, I don't know if you guys got a chance to talk about it. I was listening to the show, but I've been in and out of calls. Uh, but I know you got a couple of personal gigs as well that uh, you want to kind of let people know about in your own album. Yes. So, um, well, I have a website, MitchellForman.com. Mitchell, not Mitch. Mitchell, one elf. Foreman, no E. Not like my father, George Foreman, with the E. So, <laughs> that being said. Um, uh Oh, right. Besides that, so two things we were talking about earlier uh, with Jackie about sort of money and, and, you know, how to charge appropriately. I, I just recall, I worked with John McLaughlin for a couple of years. His quote was, I'm sure he won't mind me sharing it. He said, we're all just whores. It's just a question of price. Or we're all whores. It's just a question of price. So, hey, you know. Not, not sure. What you know? However, it gets through. We just want to get the music out, right? That's all. That's all that's <laughs> guilty. Absolutely. Exactly. Okay. So, being guilty, right? Um, here's here's next week. What's coming up? So, firstly, the, the, I have my own gig on Saturday, October seventh, at the Baked Potato. I'm at the Baked Potato in North Hollywood so often. Last week I was there. Uh, last two weeks I was there seven out of ten nights, which is really? crazy. Playing mostly. It's. It's become like my second home. Just get a but room, anyway, dude. Just get I a room. My, <laughs> I know. I should, I should have a cop there. But um, it's a great it's a great place. And everyone that works there and Justin, the guy that runs it, it's just a – I love that place. So anyway, October 6th, Friday uh, – no, October 7th, Saturday night. So I have uh, Eric Marienthal with me, um, uh, Gary Novak, Reggie Hamilton, um, who else? I'm forgetting someone. Oh, uh, Manyango Jackson, great percussionist. Oh, Manyango. So, Never heard of him. Never heard of him. <laughs> He's a good friend of ours. Uh, yeah, cool. Um, anyway, so that should be a great gig. And then the next day, October 8th, I'm playing with Eric. I'm not quite sure who's in his band. I think I do know who's in his band, but at Spagatini's in uh, wherever that is, Seal, Seal Beach. Beach. Thursday night with Gary Meek, who's a great saxophone player, having a record release party at uh, Cat- Catalina's with uh, Terry Lynn Carrington, Brian Bromberg, Walt Fowler. So it's a good weekend of gigs for me. But if you can only do one, make sure you come to mine Saturday, October 7th. And then save up your money to go to Bunny's gig October 14th. Yeah, because it's going to be a feast and fusion. <laughs> you know, it's, I, I didn't know anything about 
I, I've known Buddy for years, and we've traveled and hung out, but I never knew that he was like a chef until like a week ago. <laughs> you know, it's funny. A lot of people didn't really realize that. As, and and uh, uh, I got to give a shout out to Jaskan Dupree, who's uh, a good friend of both Bunny and mine. And uh, uh, he was the yeah. one who said, yeah, you, could, you should uh, do something with Bunny and, and cooking. This guy is amazing. And I go, really? And then asked him, he said, yeah, I'm a master chef in a past life. And I'm like, all right, let's do something. Let's do something big. Let's make make this happen. And I was fortunate That's enough and, and blessed to to try out uh, uh, his dishes that he's going to be having for the night. And I was floored. I'm not just saying that easily. I'm a big man. I love food. And you got to impress me really well to to make me say it was amazing. So yeah, it was. It's going to be a good 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 menu. Uh, in fact, if they go to the Facebook page, uh, Bunny Brunel and Cab. Beast Infusion. There's the whole uh, menu that's is right there on that, and uh, uh, you can sign up and, and do that thing. You back, Mitch? Yeah. Hey, there we are, brother. I thought <laughs> I thought we pissed you off because you told me we you weren't being paid for the gig on uh, the October 14th. So, uh, ah, yeah, I'll make sure I send that twenty dollars. No, you're, you're to you. just in food only. No, uh, I don't know what happened. Like my phone just decided that it was going to stop working. It, you know, phone, no harm, I, no I used foul. to work we, at a we, phone. We, we, Go ahead, Jackie. No, I say we said we we talked really shitty about you when you guys were gone, so we forget. We thought we were off the air there, Mitch, but uh, <laughs> oh, okay. that out. no okay. problem. That's, okay. I was thinking only kind, loving thoughts about you guys when I was off. There you go. No, there actually, go. we were talking about food. That's probably oh. our second favorite topic besides music is uh, food, man. You know, we just uh, okay. You know, we, we enjoy that. It is and, what it is. But uh, yeah, man, it's going to be a fun time. I know that uh, now that we've kind of got lost a, f- a few moments here with uh, the the telephone dance. Uh, Jackie's got more incredible questions to to ask you, so people can find out more about you, man. So, I'm going to pass it on to Jackie to take it from here, and uh, look okay. forward to seeing you on the 14th, brother. Same here, man. Nice talking to y'all. No, no, stay on, stay on. Right, Jackie's going to talk. I'm, to you. Oh, I'm here. I'm here. Yeah, Jackie's absolutely. got it. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So, so thanks, Valentino. Hey, Mitch, let me ask you this question because I, you know, again, being in that that depth of music all your life and so on, and eat, sleeping, drinking it, and and providing for the family and so on. But let me ask you this question. Actually, it's a question my wife came up with, and I love it. Everybody loves the question. I want you to think yes. for a second here. If Mitch Mitchell Foreman wasn't playing ah. music, had nothing to do with music at all, what would you be doing today? I would be doing something like incredibly geeky computery. Okay. That's what I, I like. That. In fact, I was thinking of going to take some course in programming or something. You know, it, it, I'm Even, always, you know, I always ask, I ask that question, Mitch, and this, the cross section of people responding, I asked uh, Ann Wilson from heart. I asked her, what would she be doing? And her response to me was, I'd probably die, you know, and so mm-hmm. on. Cause a lot of people don't even think about that situation where we're at. A lot of people wanted to become psychologists, psychiatrists, mm-hmm. you know, writers, you know, whatever it may be that keeps you in that business. But I'm going to ask you a question with regards to keeping you in the business. You know, uh, we talked about, you know, the the music changing and such and how it's and not changing on a yearly basis, changing on a weekly basis. Um, and again, too, a lot of the old cronies industry, like even Michael McDonald said, if you're not abreast of what's happening today, you're out of the business. You know, but, and, right. you know, and the fact of the matter is, and like my dear friend Al Demiola and another good friend of mine, Stanley Clark, am I name dropping? You bet your ass I am. But the fact is, Stanley and Al were talking, and Al said to Stanley, at our age, we should be wanting to play music, not having to play music. As he said, fusions in a state of confusion. But you know what? It, uh, will it come around? You know, I, I hope so. But my question to you, my friend, is that yeah. in this situation, I and for the young listeners out there, we do have a huge cross-section of ages here. I miss desperately a thing called Record Release Tuesday. I miss holding a tangible CD in my hand or a 33 mm-hmm. And opening it up and reading a thing called the liner notes. Do you miss those, my friend, as a musician? Do you miss seeing your constituents on an album that you didn't even know were performing on that album? Uh, I'm thinking. Yeah, take your time. You know, I, it, it's been a while since I've seen that. And, you know, you do get to that where you hear something and you're like, you have no idea who's playing on it. Right. So, th- th- that part could definitely use some addressing. You know, right. whether it's whether it's you hear something on Spotify and it's easy to click on and you can see sure. right, who's playing second violin. Not that any not that there's much second violin on these records, but. Right. Um, so, yeah, I, I, I can see that that's missing, but but I don't think it's a uh, 
I don't think it can't be incorporated into the new newer formats. It's just been overlooked, you know. And brother, for the last minute and twenty seconds, would you tell the young listeners out there what it what out of your mouth, you know, from your lips to God's ears, what it's going to take for the new young artist? What it's going to take to stay relevant? Give me a give me a thirty second response on that. Would you be so kind? I, I can't say what it's going to take to be relevant, but I, I, this came to me when I'm. I just met some students. I'm starting at this new um, school in Pasadena. Right. And I remember when I, when I was a student and it's not what it takes to be relevant, but it takes what, what is it, what does it take to be excited, to be creative, to be, uh, uh, let's use available again. And I just remember the hours I spent in those practice rooms where right. something new came to me, you know, something you're like, Hey, I never thought of this. I never even considered this just a mm. chord progression, a scale, a thing, some new music that you heard, you know? So I think it's, it's right. how to be relevant is how to be, how to be enthusiastic. Just, and, and the, the, everything else takes care of itself. You know, if you're, if you put in the time and the energy and the devotion and are excited and, and, and good at and networking with people and your friends and your, your, um, that, 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 that everything else will just occur naturally. So I, I think it's nothing that it's a great time to be, to be a young musician. Look, look at that. Look at it. all the, all the software and the gear. There's, there's so many opportunities. It's Mitch, I'm going to jump just, in right I, quick. Cause I don't want, I don't want to cut you off any more than I have you guys. Mitchell Foreman, M I T C H E L F O R M A N.com. Everything about Mitch. You don't want to miss it. Back bistro.com. You want to be here on October the 14th with Jackie's Groove and their talk radio network in the Bunny Burnell. So with that said, Mitch, thank you so much for being part of this, my friend. Love you. I'll see you thank on you. October the 14th. Save a big hug for me, and we appreciate it. Peace through music, everybody. Bye-bye now. This is Jackie Bertoni from Jackie's Groove. Come join me weekly on my journey through the music business as I take you behind the velvet rope, interviewing industry notables such as Al DiMiola, Michael McDonald, and Al Jarreau, to name but a few. Listen to their stories on being in the studios recording number one hits and onto the stages throughout the globe. Allow me to be the music historian. You can hear me live every Monday at 2 p.m. and every Wednesday at 12 noon Pacific Standard Time or 24-7 on JackiesGroove.com. Ready to get your groove on? Hi, this is Tim Dolbear from Eclectica Studios. I'm a full-time mixing and recording engineer. I work with Grammy winners, labels, and indie artists using state-of-the-art digital mixing and restoration tools and the very best in analog gear. Really, though, it's my ability to bring tracks to life and fulfill your vision for your music. This has made me sought after by producers and artists worldwide. So spend your time working on music and not chasing a mix down a rabbit hole. Go to timdolbear.com and check out our free one-song mix offer. You know what's all around you every waking moment of your life? Marketing. You're choking on it. I'm Scott Robertson, and when it comes to strategic PR, branding, and marketing, I've seen it all. And actually, I'm still seeing it because bad marketing never sleeps. Join me each week on May the Best Brand Win right here on Intertalk Radio and learn how to make the marketing for your brand unforgettable. Are you serious about your music? Are you ready to run with the big dogs? The experts at Pitbull Audio have the gear to get you into the game. From leading manufacturers like Mesa Boogie, Fender, Pioneer, and American Audio. To sound your best, you need the best. Pitbull Audio can deliver in rehearsal, on stage, and into the big time. Dropping beats, shredding guitar, or making the crowd roar. Whatever you dream, Pitbull Audio can help make it happen. We are Pitbull Audio. We want you to play it loud. PitbullAudio.com.